scripture reading for today is taken from the book of John, chapter 5, verse 6. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he, Jesus, said to him, Do you want to be made well? Will the Lord bless the reading of his word. Good morning and happy Sabbath, Church. It is a great privilege for me to be able to stand before you. I would like to thank Pastor Mark Chan, although he's not here with us, for giving me this opportunity to be able to share the Word of God with the saints of the Ballesty Road Church. I am also thankful and grateful for the warm welcome from the elders of Ballesty Road Church. One of them was Elder Himsar. A week or two before I come, before the schedule for me to speak in Ballesty Road Church, he reminded me he was very happy to be able to welcome me in his church. And also, the elders and those who are involved in the worship ministry were very helpful in uh, asking for my sermon title and preparing things for the smooth flow of the program of this Sabbath. Brothers and sisters, I would like to call our attention to the scripture this morning of a story that is so familiar, of a story that when you look at the title given here in the PowerPoint, you at least have no the idea of the rest of the story. It is what happened at the pool of Bethesda. But I believe the Holy Spirit will impress us on many, many things that we can take home. That we also may be able to experience the spiritual healing. Or maybe the physical healing that we need. That will enable us to serve God better. That will enable us to prepare ourselves and other people for the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, I do not want to read from the screen, but I was thinking, will everyone bring the same Bible um, version that I'm using? So after thinking of this for quite some time, I decided to put the text in the screen so that we can follow the reading together. Because of English barrier and challenges, I will be reading slow. I hope I will not make you sleep because of uh, doing it slow. But I'm expecting we will not miss anything. The blessing that God has prepared for us this Sabbath. If you would like to read from your Bible, you may do so. John 5, verse 1 to 10. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. 
For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. We have read the full story, a wonderful healing and miracle. I would like to invite you now to pay attention to small detail, the facts that is found in every verse that we may be able to get better understanding of what had happened. Now, this story is only written in the Gospel of John. You cannot find in other Gospels. So it is very special, the signature story of the, the Gospel of John, from the Gospel of John. Verse 1, it says, After this, why did the Bible mention after this? It was told that Jesus Christ, before this event took place, was in Samaria. He was ministering to the needs of the people in Samaria. The Jewish people cannot mingle with the people in Samaria. And Jesus, as a Jewish man, cannot come close to a woman. He is not married, but he encountered a woman by Jacob's well. His encounterment with the woman at the well was a great success. The story of a great result of Jesus' ministry. Three days, people in the city of Samaria invited Jesus, sit under the foot of Jesus, hearing him preach, and they accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior, accepted the good news of salvation in him. So after Jesus had ministered to the city of Samaria, now Jesus moved in to his own city. He went or he goes to the city of Jerusalem. And what happened in the city of Jerusalem? Why he has to be there? It is says there was a feast of the Jews. For Jewish people, for Jewish men, there are three feasts that they have to attend. It is a must for them. And Jesus, as a Jewish man, he obeyed all these festivities. And in fact, all these festivities represent Jesus. And these three festivities are Passover, Pentecost, and Feast of Tabernacle. The Bible did not mention about which feast that Jesus was there or during that time of that feast. But he was there. It is an important occasion. And Jesus, as the Lamb of God, had to go to Jerusalem. The book of John is different than the other gospel. Because John only writes the very end of the life of Jesus and his ministry on earth. John was focusing on Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God, the sacrifice 
that is going to die so that we as sinners can have eternal life. Verse 2. Now, there is in Jerusalem by the ship gate a pool. There is a pool. There has been debate on when John wrote his gospel. Some said, some scholars said, he wrote his gospel after 70 AD. Now, there is an event, a big event that happened at 70 AD. When the Roman soldiers came and destroyed Jerusalem totally and completely, including the pool of Bethesda. So no one could recognize after that where is the actual location of the pool of Bethesda. Now, John right here, there is a pool. So some scholars who took the, the position that John wrote his gospel before 70 AD, take this verse, take these words as a proof. If the pool is not there because it has been destroyed, he would have written this verse as there was a pool. But he wrote, and the language that John uses to write his gospel was in a very correct and well-written Hebrew or uh, Greek rather than Hebrew, Greek. And there is no mistake made here and they believe that there is an intention of saying there is a pool because the pool was still there. Therefore, they say that they took the stand that it was written before the pool was destroyed in 70 AD. The pool was located nearby the ship gate. Here is the temple, and there are many entrances. Here is the golden temple, a golden gate or the golden entry. And there are other gates, other entrances to the temple. But specifically, Jesus took the ship gate to enter to the temple. Ship gate is the entrance for the Jewish people and, and the priests when they come to the temple to bring their sacrifices. And in fact, in front of the gate, they call it the sheep market. The sheep will be brought into this gate, into the temple, and the sheep or the lamb will never come back alive. And Jesus, as the Lamb of God, is entering the sheep gate. John 10, verse 7 to 10. And Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate. Jesus is the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus is represented by this sheep gate. At verse 2, it also mentioned the name. The name of the pool. Pool Bethesda, having five porches. So the sheep gate is here, but it is his intention, Jesus' intention to come. You can uh, look here, Garden of Gethsemane is over here, Mount of Olives. What are these places? This is 
These are the places so dear to Jesus Christ. He loved to be there to pray. And he knew, the Lamb of God knew, the right entrance for him to come to the temple. Before he came to the temple, he made a short visit to the pool Bethesda, just nearby the entrance. There has been some debate about whether this story is a true story or it is just an illustration of what had happened during Christ's ministry on earth. Because after the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, there is no evidence of the pool of Bethesda. And so people say that this story is not true. But thank God, in early 19th century, the site of the pool Bethesda was found. And that confirmed that what happened in this story was true. The meaning of Bethesda. Some people made it this way. B, the SDA. <laughs> yes, I like it. It is so close to us. Although that is not the true meaning or the acronym, Bethesda is the house of mercy. It talks about a place, a house of mercy. And as a church, we are here in the house of God, in the house of mercy, where we found grace of God abundantly given to all of us. And so, to sum up what had happened in verse 1 and 2, Jesus, faithful to the feast of the Jews, because he is a Jewish, and all the festives represent Jesus Christ and his life and his ministry. Jesus, the Lamb of God, went to Jerusalem, and he entered by the sheep gate, and he said, I am the gate to the sheep. So that the sheep can find freedom, the Lamb of God died, that the sacrificial Lamb, who is supposed to die, that you and I, that are supposed to die because of our sin, can be set free. Jesus went to the sheep gate, to the pool, pool of Bethesda, house of grace, house of mercy. Verse 3, it says, In this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Because it is at the festive feast season, there were many people, blind, lame, they came by the gates of the temple. And can you guess what did they do there? They are waiting for people to pity on them and uh, giving them money to sustain their life. But this is the true reality of these people because they are having physical challenges. They could not come to the temple. They are left out from the things, festive, great festive of the Jewish people. They are left out because they have some defects in their body and no defects can enter the temple Jesus was there he took time he spent time to visit them those that are in need verse 4 it talks about an angel coming down Stir the water, and those who get in first, get well. Is this a biblical idea? Yes, it comes from the Bible, but it is the thing that is in accordance to how God operates. The reason why I choose the New King James Version or the King James Version is because in New International Version, it did not mention about this. Because it seems that it is not right. Now let us look at 
what Ellen G. White says about this. About the angels. It was commonly believed that this was the result of supernatural power. And that whoever first, after the troubling of the pool, stepped into the waters would be healed of whatever disease he had. So, this is not God's angel. This is the superstitious. This is the common belief among the people. And it was taken by John to say that they believe that an angel, but it was actually not the angels of God. And it says here, whoever stepped in first, what is the problem of whosoever stepped in first? Look at the description given by Ellen G. White. But so great was the crowd during the festive days when the water was troubled that they rushed forward, trembling underfoot men, women, children, weaker than themselves. Many could not get near the pool. Many who had succeeded in reaching it died upon its brink. Do you think that Jesus or God allows such healing? No. But this is the description of how the place was to be taken a good name. Bethesda, house of mercy. But what happened, the actual thing that happened there was not showing mercy. Whosoever is first, whosoever is Vital, whosoever is the best, survival for the fittest, whosoever thinks that I am perfect, whosoever thinks that I am holy. And the house of mercy that represents in the church, the place of healing, the place where we can find grace of God. There are times when self-centered, self-centeredness, Destroy the blessings that God intended for His people. House of mercy is the place where salvation by work, by, by faith. House of merit, the actual thing that happened at the pool of Bethesda, salvation by works. And this is actually the picture that Jesus wanted to show the attitude, the mindsets of the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the scribes, these are their attitude. In order for them to be saved, they have to work. Don't do this, don't do this on Sabbath. And making themselves as the center of their worship. Salvation is a gift, is a free gift of God. But according to the house of merit, salvation is a selfish human effort. House of mercy, it's about God's religion. House of merit is about human-made religion. We have learned about the detailed things, some facts, important facts that we can get from this story. But I would like to leave you with a wonderful lesson that you and I can bring home. And that it is my prayer that we can experience the healing, physical healing, also spiritual healing that God has prepared for us through this presentation of the Word of God. Let us focus on what had happened to this sick man. I would like to include five points here. Number one, the reality about the sick man. Next is the place healing was expected. The third, the obstacle he encounters. Fourth, the duration of his suffering. And finally, the ultimate source of his deliverance. The sick man. This man in our text today 
is representative of many people and even to many who are present here at this time. It means the sick men represent you and me. He is categorized in the Bible as having infirmities, invalid, lacking in power, helpless, suffering, sick. He is in the desperate need of healing. Therefore, this man represents everyone who presently in need of the healing touch of Jesus. Do we? Do we need the healing touch of Jesus to happen in our life? Would you raise your hand or say amen? Amen. The reason why we are here is because there is a need for us to meet with Jesus Christ. Unless we have the need to meet, to encounter Jesus Christ, and to have His Holy Spirit live in us, our worship is just a routine on a weekly basis, coming to the church. Somebody say that I may be physically well, therefore this story is not for me. But one way or the other, you and I might be suffering of broken heart, broken relationship with God, lost of interest in studying the Bible and prayer, always been defeated by temptation given by the devil, too busy that we have no time for God, no victory over our commitment to be faithful to the Lord. We may have encountered that we have no one to be with us. There is guilty feeling inside us and we are burdened. The Lord promised us in Psalm 147, verse 2 and 3, the Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exile of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Oh, what a wonderful Savior we have. He loved us so much. And He is the only source of our spiritual problem. Secondly, we talk about the place where the healing was expected. It was the place of the pool of Bethesda, the house of mercy, house of grace. When we consider the name, we can apply that to our setting, our church as a place of mercy and grace. But this man has been there for many, many years with no healing and restoration in his life. I am giving you the challenge, brothers and sisters. How many of us have been here in Ballasty Road Church for many, many years, but we have not encountered Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, that we have not brought our infirmities, our weaknesses, our difficulties, challenges, our laziness, our defect, Put it to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, help me. This man was in a place where he is expected to find healing, but no healing came. We need to come to Jesus every day, each day of our lives. And it is my prayer that today when you go out, when we go out, we have encountered Jesus and says, Thank God, today I have come to the Lord. I have surrendered my life to you. All these times I have fought the fight of being faithful, of being religious, of being victorious by myself, and I have always been defeated. I have never gained victory over my appetite, over my eye desire, over my anger, over many things, sinful thoughts in my mind, in my life. But I am thankful today. I encounter Jesus. Bethesda will never be the place of healing if Jesus didn't come. The house of mercy of Ballasty Road Church will not be a place of healing if Jesus is not here. And especially if Jesus is here, and we believe He is here, when Jesus is not in the heart of each and every one of us. Thirdly,
Let's look at the obstacle he encountered. First, this man has limited opportunities that he can afford because he has a problem with his leg. He paralyzed. He cannot walk. Secondly, the people around him was so focused on self-centeredness. If the water is stirred, I must be the first. I don't care about others. I can step on other people as long as I am recognized, I am known, I can be seen as someone good. No support from his people. He himself is weakened by his self. Problem, sickness, and we too have been weakened by our own sinful nature. But there is a good news. It doesn't matter whether you are weak, you are slow to understand, you are slow to believe, you are unworthy, you are sinful. Jesus Christ is looking for you. Jesus Christ wanted to heal you as we come to worship Him in His house of mercy. Number four, we are going to see the duration of His suffering. This man has been invalid for 38 years long. Hard, difficult years. He is impotent with the without the strength to support him. Almost all the productive years of his life has been eaten by his sickness. If a man works well after he graduates, university years, at the age of, let's say, 20, he starts his career, therefore, there, are, there is a saying that says, life begins at 40. But this man, he has wasted 38 years. And if he would have been healed, what is the rest of his life will be? But Jesus can give something that is more and beyond that 38 years. The healing that Jesus gives, that, gave, that Jesus gave him, not only for the sake of the loss of what he has lost in 38 years, and only the benefit, the years of his life on earth, maybe 70 or 80 years old. But beyond that, for eternity, the promise of salvation is given to this man. There is a hope in Jesus Christ of your healing. There is a hope of restoration. There is a hope of victory that you and I can have in the name of our mighty Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we come to our last and final point. is the source of his healing. 38 years, he had sin. Healing slipped away from the grasp of his hand. He had seen angel trouble the water, but he could never get there in time. He could never be the first. 38 years, the promise came. Oh, later, you are going to be the first. But he was left disappointed. 38 years, it looked like his day will never come. But today... But at this time, his 38 days of suffering will come to an end. Are you ready, brothers and sisters, to be healed today because you have encountered, you have seen Jesus coming to your life? Are we all ready? And this is a crucial time. As Jesus about to enter the temple. In his mind, he was thinking about a man. 
as he was going to the gate of ship or the ship gate, he was thinking of someone. And so instead of going to that gate, Jesus, the Lamb of God, was thinking about a person. So he backed up, he turned, and then he went to the pool, to Bethesda pool, where there are five porches. He went into the first porch. He looked around. He saw many multitudes of people that are in need. But he could not find that man. He go into the second porch. He saw there are sick people lying down. But he didn't see you. He didn't see me. So he moved on to the third porch. He saw many people with sad faces. But your face was not there. My face is not there. He moved to the fourth where there are people with suffering. He couldn't find you and me there. He moved to the fifth porch. And there at the corner of that porch, he saw you and he saw me. And his eyes glued to you and me. And he walked right to this man and said, Do you want to be healed? The salvation that Jesus gave is not something that you and I are looking for because we have fallen into sin. We want to run away from God. Adam and Eve ran away from God. But Jesus came to look for him. This man was always looking at the water. When is the water going to stir? But Jesus Christ is looking at him. Salvation comes from Jesus Christ. Salvation comes and is offered to you and me right now. Accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior for the healing of our spiritual defects. This man looked at Jesus and he said, but no man have ever helped me to bring me in there. If you can just help me, I will be healed. He was too much focusing. He was drowned under his sin, difficulties, and the problems that he encounters every day. But let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ has the power to bring you victory over the blindness that is covering our eyes, the sinful thing that blinded our eyes from looking at the victory that Jesus prepared to give us this Sabbath day. Looking at the healing that Jesus is preparing for you and me so that we can be a better person when we come out from this house of mercy. Jesus didn't talk about, do you know the scripture? Do you know the 28 fundamental belief? Do you know the Sabbath school? Do you spend time in prayer? He said, pick up your mat and walk. An act of faith. You are healed. Believe. Don't let anything come between you and me. Don't let anything come between you and Jesus Christ. Believe. Act on your faith. And you shall receive your healing. And he was able to follow the word of Jesus Christ. I am longing to see my picture there. When Jesus said, I have known you. You're suffering for many years. You have been battling with sin and difficulties to gain victory. Now I'm telling you, you are healed. You have victory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stand up and walk. I am longing and have the desire to be 
at the place of this man. And I believe that you and I too have that longing and that desire to act in our faith. Because Jesus, He has not changed. He is the God who did miracles in the past, who can heal the sick and even raise the dead. He is the same God who forgives sin and made us whole. Not only our physical challenges defect, but also our spiritual problem and sin. Do we thank God for this assurance? Raise your hand if you want to thank God that today I have heard, I have seen the mighty power of Jesus Christ at the house of mercy. And I will also choose today to believe in Him, to obey Him, to take Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, to leave what is behind all the past of 38 years of the long defeated life walking to the temple with Jesus Christ because when they asked who killed you who healed you on Sabbath he said I don't know but he met Jesus in the temple he was walking with God what a joy it is when we are faithful in our commitment with Jesus. When we ask Jesus to be part of our life, to be Lord and Savior, when we ask Jesus to take control of our lives, we are going to walk to the great house of God, to His temple. And there, you, you, and I will see Him face to face and know that He, His voice that I heard, He, and His love. This is He, Jesus Christ. A great, wonderful Savior that died on the cross to save you and I. And this is the greatest joy of all our life to go to heaven and meet Him. Is this your desire? Say Amen. amen. Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for taking your time before fulfilling your duty to come on earth to be the ultimate sacrifice. You spend your time to walk and to stop by at our Bethesda pool looking for us who has not known about your grace and mercy, who met me, have rejected your love. But praise God, you have healed us completely this Sabbath day. May our commitment be firm to you, dear Lord, that from now on we will walk in faith and in victory in you, that we will always have great communion with you each day, abide in you, and we always abide in Jesus Christ that we, our life will be fruitful that we have a living spiritual life in you dear gracious heavenly father we thank you for your grace and mercy that you have brought us here at the house of Bethesda at the pool of Bethesda at Balestiro Church we praise your holy name. We thank you for your love, dear Lord, and the victory. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.